You're watching Q&A. Our next question comes from uh, Sarosh Matliwala. Thank you. Uh, Tony Abbott endlessly claims that the Howard government solution to boat arrivals worked, but makes no mention of the inhumane consequences that often arose in implementing that policy. Is Tony Abbott fair dinkum in wanting to find a solution that recognises the evolving complexities and nuances of this challenge? Or is he just playing blunt spoiling tacti tactics to obstruct a parliamentary solution so he can gain power at the expense of faceless and nameless human beings? George Brandis. Well, I think the greatest in inhumanity we've seen is what we saw in the last couple of days with all those people drowning. Now, there have been more than 500 people drown at sea in the last four years. That's inhumanity. Now, I find this discussion very, very frustrating because although it's always kind of pitched in a partisan way, I, I don't see it as, a part as partisan as perhaps you do. The f this, where, this is my approach, right? And I think it reflects the Tony Abbott's approach and the Liberal Party's approach. In 2001, Howard changed the laws. He made them tighter. You say they, they were inhumane, but nobody drowned during those years. And he, eff and he effectively solved the problem through three measures. It's not true that no one drowned in those years. Uh, uh, there, were, there, there, was hardly, there were hardly any <laughs> significant <laughs> incidents of the kind we saw the we other day. We remember Civ X, one of the most mm. famous drowning Absolutely. incidents of all time. Mm. That's, yeah, but that was before. That was before those policy changes were announced, Tony. So I, th I think my proposition is right that no Being one drowned in, in those years. Is... Now, but, but hang on, is it, uh, hang on, Louise. <laughs> the worst thing is people drowning, right? So what do you do to stop it? You stop the boats. Well, how do you stop the boats? You deprive the people smugglers of a product to sell. How do you do that? You persuade their potential market that they're not going to get through or they're not going to get permanent resettlement in Australia. So we had three policies. Um, uh, the Nauru solution, temporary protection visas, and turning boats around where it was feasible to do so, which was seldom, but occasionally it was feasible. Now, whether you like those policies or not, they worked. In the six years during which those policies were in operation, there were 270 people came to Australia. In the four years since the policies were abandoned, there have been more than 19,000 arrived in Australia and more than 500 people have drowned. So when we say, we don't, we don't support your policies because demonstrably they don't work. We had a solution which did work so I don't think we're being partisan and saying, why doesn't the government just embrace the policies that demonstrably worked? Can I just put it to you? You've got three uh, coalition moderates uh, now who've called for a fresh approach, who've called for discussions with the government, who've called for a new way of looking at this. They're talking to independents who have the same view. These are moderates. Uh, you're from that wing of the party. Do you share their concerns that there needs to be a bipartisan approach now? I'll tell you what is bipartisan about this, Tony. Everybody wants the problem solved. So the question is, what suite of policies are most likely to solve the problem? And when the choice is between a suite of policies that demonstrably worked and a suite of policies that have demonstrably failed, I don't think it's a very difficult choice. But Senator Brandis, how on earth can you say that Labor's policies aren't working when you won't let them actually legislate them and put them into practice? Well, hang on, hey, Tim, well, Tim the, 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 what we object to about what the Labor Party wants to do a, a, a course of action which, by the way, they roundly denounced 18 months ago, is to strip all human rights protections out of, the, out of the Migration That's... Act by removing from Section 198A of the Migration Act the human rights protections that the Howard government put there. Okay. That's what we That's... object to. I just want to hear uh, Kate Lundy responding to uh, your comments just then. OK, look, a number of things about this. Every time we discuss this, it's important to remember that we're talking about a really, really small percentage of people who are trying to seek asylum in Australia. Um, around the world, there are millions of people who are displaced. And the, relatively speaking, the challenge we're facing here is very, very small. Um, putting it in that context, what we believe as a government is we need to have a regional uh, framework for managing this problem. There are many people in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Thailand who are in transition in this region. And regardless of, of whether we like it or not, we need to work with our regional partners in solving this problem and finding 
um, durable solutions, um, you know, permanent settlement for people who are genuinely owed protection um, uh, under the UN Charter. So our approach is to try and come up with an arrangement that involves our neighbours. It does involve Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia has a particular problem and the UNHCR were particularly keen, of course, to be able to start dialogue with the Malaysian government and help to move refugees through Malaysia in an orderly way. Um, so hence that was part of our arrangement. We need to legislate uh, to allow our offshore processing uh, in Malaysia to occur as a result of the High Court decision. And this is where the impasse starts. Okay, we've asked, I'm just going to interrupt you for a moment. We've asked the we've opposition got... right. to support that legislation and they won't. We think we've got policies that will work. Um, they don't have the characteristics of the former government's policies, which in the end I think uh, there was a consensual objection to temporary protection visas and the combination of policies that they were employing, which is why we changed. Yeah, now we're trying to manage it in an environment where we don't have temporary protection visas and we're able to offer permanent okay, protection, okay. All right, we're, we're, which is what we should do under right, the we're, Charter. We're going to discuss this in more detail. We've got people in the audience with their hands up. We've also